I don't want. I don't want. I'm Barry Botone back with the Tour Res Recovery podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, would you like to go around the room, introduce yourself? Go around the circle. Yeah. Uh, so I'll start. I'm uh, Darian Trabata, the director of Tour. Uh, so been here since the beginning. So we'll go on. All right. Uh, my name is Domingo Whiteman. I'm mm-hmm. the Tour Prevention and Admin Assistant. Been here since the beginning when we were in a little closet with the boxes. Mm-hmm. Like if a fire breaks out, we're we're doomed. We got our obituary <laughs> pictures ready. Yeah. But yeah, uh, I'm a well I'll pass it off. Appreciate that. <laughs> I'm Carmelo Rivellas. I'm the behavioral health case manager for Tour. Um, been here since almost the beginning, about two weeks afterwards. Still in the same closet, same boxes. <laughs> yeah. My picture is not ready. I don't. Plan on <laughs> All right. Um, well, I guess today we were wanting to talk a little bit about stigma, you know. But uh, first of all, I'd like to get the elders' meditation. I like I'd yeah, like yeah. Domingo to go ahead and bless <clears throat> us with this meditation. Well, all y'all out there, Happy New Year, uh, twenty twenty four. Hope everybody had a good Christmas and good New Year's. Today is January fourth. Uh, we read it's from Lame Deer Lakota. It says, our circle is timeless, flowing. It is a new life emerging from death, life winning out over death. And today is uh, when we look at the world in the manner which the Great Spirit designed it, we can see why it makes sense to live in harmony with it. The tree grows, the bare fruit, the fruit has seeds, the seeds fall to the ground. The ground grows, new trees, old trees die to make way for the young. Anytime we think we can interrupt this, cir- this circle or change it. We will experience turmoil and confusion. The human cycle exists as the baby becomes the youth. The youth becomes the adult. The adult has children. The adult becomes elder. And the elder teaches the youth. Elders go on to the spirit world. Spirit comes into babies to produce new life. Flow into the flow. Be the path of least resistance. And I kind of got that today. As I read today, kind of helped me... Um, Talked to my sister, uh, you know, shout out to you. We we talked about how, you know, you know, like my nephew, how I mentioned before, he mentioned stuff, Star Wars, like, <laughs> but he always says, uh, talks about it. And then my sister's like, yeah, w- you know, we all have a lot of our own Yodas, our own elders, the teachings of, you know, just listening. And it's always being there when they talk about that, what happened or their experience or their ways that they learned. So I feel like that, like the elders, you know, go on to the spirit world. Spirit comes into the babies to produce new life. So flow with the flow into the flow. Uh, be the path of least resistance. So like break, talking about today, it's breaking the stigma. So, um, yeah, that's all I got. Oh. <clears throat> you know, uh, when you got done reading that, you know, um, the first thing that came to mind was, you know, as an alcoholic, the first dilemma I had was I realized my lack of power. You know, uh, an alcoholic, as an alcoholic, I want to control everything. You know, I want to know, I want to control how you feel. I want to control how you, uh, you know, look at life. I want to control that for you. You know, because if everybody just did everything Barry's way, this would be a much better world. You know, (laughs) and um, that's, that's, that's the first dilemma that alcoholics you know, that's the first thing that we realize is that our lack of power, you know, because if it was that way, man, I'm sure I'd be living under a bridge still somewhere, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but, um, you know, um, trying to control the flow of things, you know, I it made me realize, you know, that, you know, humility, you know, uh, it, it finally meant something to me, you know, to be humble, to uh, sit back and realize that I can live life on life's terms. You know, I don't have to be control of anything. I don't have to uh, put this extra pressure on myself because I want these substances in my life. You know, I want things to go this way because I feel better that way. You know, uh, it was getting out of my comfort zone and, uh, Realizing that I had an issue that I, I, 
I couldn't do on my own. You know, I couldn't handle this this problem on my own. And, uh, you know, and since I've realized that, my life has become blessed beyond measure. You know, um, just realizing that um, there's a lot of things that I got to give to the creator. You know, things that are out of my control. You know, um, I had people pass away that were in my life that, I don't know, I thought I had the ability to keep these people alive. You know, like, I felt like I had a part and if only they would have listened to me, they would still be here. You know, like these things were things that were going on inside of my head. And I have no control <laughs> over any of that. You know, that has nothing to do with me. You know, that was between them and the, the creator, you know. And um, it took it took a lot of me looking at myself to realize that, you know, that that elders meditation, I like that for today, you know, because like they always say in AA or oops, like they always say in this at my clubhouse is, you know, keep it simple. You know, um, there's no need for me to uh, feel like or to even think that I can even compare to what the creator has in store for everybody, you know, um, that's not my job, you know, in a, I have, I have the tendency to, to want to play God, you know, uh, regardless of the, the situation, you know, I, I'm a control freak, you know, I want things to go my way, you know, and that's it, you know, it, that, how's that going to benefit anybody, you know, that's how selfish and self-centered I can be, you know, so I, I, I have to realize these things every day and realize that. I'm just a part of the creator's world. You know, this is his, this is his world. You know, I'm just living in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, does anybody else would like to share on what was just said? You know, I think it's, um, you're talking about control and I had to, used to have a huge battle with that myself. Um, I think I still have a small part of it, but like there isn't a part of me where, <clears throat> you know, back in the day where I thought I had to have my hand in this and this and this because I had to be the one to control every single outcome. And that had to do with my kids, had to do with them, um, had to do with, you know, my family and everything else. Like no one else is going to drive because I'm the one that gets to control the situation. You know, no one else is, no one else is going to work. No one else is going to do this. No one else is going to do that. And I think it's, um, it's like you said, you have to let go. You have to be able to let go and you know, there's a saying, let go and let God, let go mm -hmm. and let creator. And to be able to, I just had a realization one day is like, I, I'm not going to be able to do that. There's no way it's not possible. And um, you just have to be able to, I don't know. I think I'm still, I still battle with it just like I'm sure you still battle with it. Mm -hmm. But like, there's just certain things where like um, my wife will literally just have to grab me and be like, just stop. Because you're not going to be able to do it all. Yeah. Sometimes like that. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, and it's just like, you know, you know, you have to be able to not take everything because, you know, sometimes, you know, you're, I was taught, like, you know, you do all this because you're the one that has to take care of everybody. You're the one that has to do this, and you're the one that has to make sure that this happens and this happens and this happens. And when you take all that on, it's a huge burden. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of it is taught to, like, you know, I was raised in um, a single-parent household, and my mom taught me a lot of that stuff to where, like, you can't rely on all these people. You can't rely on this. You can't rely on that. You have to be able to do all this yourself. But in doing that, she taught me a lot and to be able to take care of myself. But with that, I wasn't allowing anybody else to take care of themselves. I was doing it all for them. I wasn't allowing anybody else to be independent that was in my life or anything like that. And so it was, it put a lot of struggle into and stress on me to where, you know, I was battling with stuff every day and I didn't even realize it. So to be able to let go is, uh, like I said, I had a realization one day and it was just like, oh my goodness. And now I'm still dealing with it, but not as much as I was. 
So yeah, that it really brings out a lot whenever you when I read that this morning it was like that. So well, thank you. I like that. Okay. Um, you know, we were wanting to talk about stigma. I looked up the definition of stigma, stigma. just so you know, um stigma, a mark of disgrace associated with a particular circumstance, quality, or person. The stigma of having gone to prison will always be with me. You know, um, that that plays a huge part in people's recovery and what the community thinks about people in recovery. I mean, you know, uh, I've, I've been told before that, oh, I'm an alcoholic and I'm a drug addict. I've had a person tell me, well, you're just going to keep relapsing. You know, that's that's just part of it. You know, and I'm just like, what? No, it's not. You know, like, like what? <laughs> I mean, but I ain't going to sit here and act like it's not a possibility. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you know, um, I can't believe that. You know, I can't let that in my head and start to even plant that seed that, you know, I'm going to relapse. You know, um I feel like I have a firm foundation. You know, I feel like I'm I've got a, a good enough foundation to where I can build on on these things. I've dug deep into uh, what kept what kept taking me out, you know. And um I feel like stigma, you know, um that's that's a big one. That's a big one for uh people in the community. You know, uh, when they associate alcoholics and drug addicts, you know, they they just picture us one way, you know, and uh, it, it, I can't sit here and act like it didn't control my life at one time, you know, but at the same time, I also am getting to the bottom of what was bothering me enough to, to keep me out there, you know, and I, I got to say, you know, we do recover. We do get better. I am trying to heal. That ain't going to stop people from thinking that I'm one step away from just, you know, going out. And and I got to think of it as, you know, if I go out again, I may never come back. You know, that's just how I got to think of it. So, uh. What kind of stigmas do you feel like we've ran into or we see a lot of? Uh, I mean, the easy one is uh, people uh, kind of seeing, you know, shame with substance use, which uh, honestly, I mean, like, that's just so common. So that's why we try to go uh, as low barrier to, like, providing care and everything to where, like, we don't even see who we're helping with, like, Mm -hmm. you know, stigma-free distribution sites um, where we leave, like, supplies for people that are in active use um, so that way they can you know, stay alive, honestly. Uh, and so that's, that's our biggest stigma that I've seen. Uh, you know, I mean, we'll ask people straight up, be like, you smoke crack? Like you need stuff? Like you need help? Like we're here. And they're like, Oh, what are you doing? We're like, I can, you can see it, (laughs) but, (laughs) but it's all right. I mean, like, we don't care. (laughs) Like we're, we're here for you guys. Yeah. Uh, and so like, I've always wondered why, uh, people kind of, you know, turn away whenever they they see people that need help uh because like the only analogy i can think of um for like somebody that's in active substance use is like say somebody's driving down the road they take a different turn like that could have been like the little choice of like hey i'm gonna like try this drink and then that just leads them down a path but um and then they see somebody they ask for directions that person's not gonna be like no i'm not gonna help you like or like like look away and pretend not to see them it's like, yeah, that initial choice, like they were just thinking that they were just doing one thing. Uh, they didn't know how far it would take them down this path. Mm-hmm. And so why would you not help the person that's lost in their life? Uh, and so that's what I think we do a good job at is uh, people ask us and we, you know, do our thing, help them uh, find the right path, you know, hook them up with mobriety stuff, hook them up with treatment centers, um, maintenance. Like, I mean, you know, just reaching out to them, calling uh I mean, you know, one day we'll call, that person will be at their lowest point. The next day they're like, oh, I'm almost, you know, to a treatment facility because yeah. like, of what we've done. And so uh, I think that's one big thing for us is that uh, 
we don't stigmatize substance use because we do know uh, it's pre- pretty much out of control or mm-hmm. out of your own control. And so we, uh, we're just there to be a lifeguard, if you will, uh, just to kind of help them get afloat, help them uh, get on their path. Thank you. I like that. Mm-hmm. What about you, Mingo? Uh, I think stigma. It's, um, like with uh, our Native communities, our families that are, oh, you know, they're just going to end up like that. They're going to do this just, they're going to be drinking again or substance abuse, and it's going to fall along. But it's like, no, it's like, it's, you know, sad to say it when they say that. It makes, makes me mad, you know. It's, uh, I'm just like, no, you know, it's it's up to them if they're going to change or not. But, you know, we're here, like the lifeguard, like you said, you know, there's, there's uh, help out there. You know, but it's always scary to them to make that big changes, you know, people, places, and things. And I just think that stigma, you know, that's a lot of it in our Native communities. And, um, you know, it's sad to see, you know, but, you know, I just want to let y'all know, you know, we're we're here. We're here for, you know, support and treatment. And there's, you know, there's ways to get out, you know, ways to break that stigma. So that's what I, that's how I see it, you know, over these growing up and seeing that, you know, because... Even with just, you know, my family and stuff, you know, the uh, drug dealers and whatnot, it's like, you know, that didn't continue, you know, that didn't follow with, you know, and I have that blood, you know. So I, I just think just breaking that stigma, that's what it means to me. Oh. Mm. What's up, Carmelo? <clears throat> um, what kind of stigmas do you see that we face a lot as we get out and do our thing? I think a lot of them are... You know, just dealing with people in general, just the the general people, not, you know, the people that we know that we're trying to help. I think that's um, sometimes it's a big issue because I think in the beginning, people didn't really know what we were doing. And now that people are starting to realize that, OK, yeah, these guys are here to help. They're not here to um, I'm trying to think of the word. They're not here to try to help them continue their habit, their help. They're here to help them try to break their habit. Mm-hmm. And we're trying to keep them safe because even if they're, they are using, then, you know, you know from your own experience that you're going to do anything and everything in order to get mm-hmm. that next that next high or whatever it is you're looking for. And it doesn't matter what you're using. It doesn't matter how you're getting it. So we're just there to try to make sure they're staying safe. And hopefully at some point down the road, they're going to come back and realize that all we're trying to do is protect them and we can show them the way from that step all the way, you know, through the next steps of recovery. And so I think that's a, that was a huge stigma that we dealt with. And, and that was each of us because people didn't even know how to talk to us. People didn't know we existed. People didn't know how, um, harm reduction works. People didn't know like, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? And, you know, and it's crazy to think, but like, you know, our elders used to be like, oh, well, just tell them to stop. Mm -hmm. That's all it takes. Mm -hmm. And that's that's something that we battle with all the time, because as Native American people, like you're you you grow up in a in an environment to where it's like, oh, well, you know, all you got to do is tell them to stop. And now it's like well, I want my grandkids or I want my son or I want my nephews to be able to go to treatment and you guys go get them and go take them because that's all it takes. <laughs> and I think that's one of the biggest, you know, one of the biggest things that we deal with is like, oh, okay, well, we're not, you know, we're not the police. We can't just go grab somebody. Yeah. <laughs> and um, We can impersonate. We can yeah. <laughs> yeah. break into hotel yeah. rooms and get we, people. <laughs> we had somebody that was a light horseman in Res Dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 He's, he's got the costume <laughs> still. Got yeah. He can call them up and yeah. have them come and help him out. Yeah. But no, but like that's what I think that's like the huge barrier that we faced as tour. And um, I think it's that that barrier, that stigma is breaking down as we're getting our word out there. And I think people are starting to realize, Hey, these guys are out there saving lines. And what is the, you know, there's tons of people that are out there. All it takes is one life. And how many have we, how many have we already oh, yeah. helped out? Whole bunch. Yes. And, and it's, um, you know, and it's great for us to be able to do that, but you know, we still face some, we still face some, you know, some people don't, I mean, some people don't want to hear from you. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. They see me coming. They go, yeah. there, right? you know. <laughs> yeah. and, and some of it's just because they know you talk too much. <laughs> and, but you know, but some, you know, some kids, and it's like that. Because I remember growing up, you know, some kids, 
Um, they need to hear that story. They need yeah. to hear that. Mm -hmm. There's some other ones that aren't going to pay attention to a darn thing you say, mm -hmm. and they need some other avenue. I was one of those kids. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they need some other avenue in order to realize, like, hey, maybe these guys are here to help, and maybe I don't need to listen to him, but there's these other avenues I can go through, and we're here to provide every single one of those avenues, mm -hmm. whether or not they want to listen to you or not. So, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, those are, like I said, those are the stigmas. Like, we deal with it. Like, schools don't want to deal with it sometimes. Because they think we're enabling people, and that's not what we're trying to do. Oh, no. We're just trying mm -hmm. to provide education and try to help people because we can't be everywhere 24-7. Like, people have to be able to do this on their own. Yeah, and that's, for sure. And that's our goal is to treat them and to teach them that way. So I think those are the biggest stigmas that we deal with as tour. Yeah, for sure. You know, uh, one of the – I think a big stigma that I've seen was – you know, whether it's their parent or grandparent or whoever it is that approaches us and is like, they need help. You know, like, what can you do for them? You know, and like you were saying, you know, at some point, they're going to have to want that mm -hmm. themselves. Right. You know, uh, I, regardless of how, you know, how bad I was getting in my addiction... It wasn't until I was ready. You know, it was not until I was ready and I was fed up with the way that I was living, the way my life was going, and I kept ending up in the same spot. You know, and uh, I mean, but once I made that conscious decision, like, you know what, that this is enough. You know, like, um, I can't do this anymore. You know, um, I felt like, because of my own experience with alcoholics and addicts from my family, you know, I thought it was a never ending process. You know, I watched most of my uncles and my aunt, I watched them all drink themselves to death, you know, and uh, I just thought that's how it ended. I thought that was the end result was you get cirrhosis or you have an accident and something happens and you're not here anymore. You know, I, I honestly thought that's the only way out. And, you know, as I got a little bit older and realized, you know, like, like, nah, there's people that went and got sober, you know, uh, like, how do they do that? You know, like, how do they go through life without any kind of substance? You know, like, they got to be lying. You know, yeah. <laughs> there's no way like somebody's just sitting there sober and happy all day long. You know, yeah. like, there's no way. <laughs> but it wasn't until I realized that mental health has just as much to do with this thing as it does, you know, as as the actual drug or alcohol that they're taking. You know, this is a this this is um like the way that I had to adjust my attitude, the way that I, I had to have an open mind and approach this thing, like, like my life depended on it. You know, that's how serious I took this thing was I knew my life depended on it because I have a history with my family of these things not ending well. You know, um, you know, I used to have an uncle here in town, uh, my Uncle Crow. Man, he was the best uncle, man. Loved this little guy, man. He was he was he was a hell of an uncle. But he could not quit drinking for nothing. For nothing. Every day. It was it was nothing out of the ordinary to come outside and see him asleep in the yard. I mean, it was so normal. Like no like like dang, he looks hot. You know what I mean? Just go on my way, you know? You <laughs> or, his alarm. Or, or go downtown El Reno and he's just laying there. Like, or crawling home. Completely normal. And, you know, um, he uh, went swimming in Lake El Reno and he drowned and, you know, um, that was horrible. You know, um, I think about him 
all the time because, you know, he was such a happy person. I can hear him laughing right now. You know, um, it was, you know, he, I don't even know how long he struggled. I don't know, like, I, I don't know who to ask to, you know, realize how long he had this struggle. If he even tried to get sober, you know, there was probably half, probably not even half the resources that there are today, you know, and, um, you know, cause back then when I was growing up, you had like a family drunk, you know, like most families had like a family drunk. My family had like <laughs> the family sober. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was crazy, you know? Um, and now today, now today, you have the family drunk, you got the family tweaker, you got the family heroin mm -hmm. addict, you got the mm -hmm. family pill addict, you got like all these different substances that these people are on now, you know, I mean, it's just, but to me, it, it all, one thing they all have in common is that something drove them to this point where that's the only relief that they're getting in their life. You know, whether it's depression, you know, whether it's, you know, whatever it is, mental health, you know, maybe it's some trauma that they, you know, encountered in their life. You know, um, I, I just want people to realize that, um, you know, if if you give if you give if you're even thinking about recovery, if you're even thinking that, you know, uh, there's a spark of hope left in you that, you know, that you're tired, you're ready to do something different. You're ready to uh, get get a hold of this thing, because, I mean, the person that I became and the things that I was willing to do, I mean, it. it I can't even <laughs> I don't even want to think about, you know, where I was mentally, you know, suicide, suicidal and depressed. And I mean, just nothing good at all was coming out of my, you know, my thoughts out of my head, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, I think the stigma that that I think that I think I see the most from native from natives is that you know um we just don't know how to talk about this thing we don't know how to approach it it's like it's like when we're trying to give somebody narcan oh i don't talk to those people mm -hmm. yep all the time you know i don't i don't deal with those people i don't talk to them you know um you know it's like either they know exactly how what's going on or they don't want anything to do with that. I mean, which I understand, you know, like you've kept it out of your life. You're very lucky because there's a lot of families that that have to deal with this th stuff every day. You know, they can't sweep it under the rug no more. They can't hide it no more. It's controlling this household and, you know, and everybody's suffering from it. You know, um, I... There's so many families that I know need help. You know, there's so many people. I got so many friends that are still out there. You know, and um, I feel like if I just keep doing what I'm doing, you know, if, if I can just stay sober just for today, you know, I ain't got to stay sober in five years or I just got to stay sober for today. You know, uh, I feel like the creator is going to, as long as I can do that, he's going to find a way to find these people. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's been tough, you know, it's been tough, you know, because I still got family that, you know, I love and care about, you know, like I see them suffering, you know, I hear about what they're going through. I hear about their lives and, you know, it, it's not a good feeling, you know, because, I feel like everybody deserves to be happy. Everybody deserves to be sitting where I am and doing what I'm doing, or even if it's not that, I mean, just happy. 
you know, and uh, I can say that's that's probably the biggest blessing of my life today is that, you know, uh, I just got to worry about where my next drink's going to, mm. you know. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I ain't worried about stealing no more. I ain't worried about lying to nobody. I ain't worried about where I'm going to sleep, where I'm going to eat. Can I take a bath today? You know, uh, do I got clean socks? Do I got to go, you know, mm-hmm. just. Now you can make that choice of whether to bathe or not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <Clean> <laughs> yeah. Now it's voluntary. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you know, I think yeah. it's, you know, you're we're talking about stigma and, you know, sometimes there's unknown ones like like we talk about there's normal and like there's a lot of families that you know, you grow up and your dad and your mom and your aunts and your uncles, they're all alcoholics and so these kids that are growing up, that's normal to them. That's this is what they do. They go to work, they come home, they start drinking, they wake up, they go to they go to work, they start drinking again, and it's just like this normal thing. And you see kids that are in those environments. You see the ones that grow up, and they're just like, they're like, oh, well, you know, this is just what they do, and there's nothing ever, like, you you can talk to them till they're, till they're till you're blue in the face, and they're just like, well, my mom, this is what my mom and dad did. Mm-hmm. They're going to, they, if they survived and they were able to provide for me the whole time, like what what what's going to stop me from going out and being happy and what they think is happy what they perceive to be happiness because that's what they that's what they think that what happiness is like oh they, they have a family they're able to do this they're able to do that and so like there's these unknown things there's these what you know what kids and what families perceive to be normal and it's not what we say is not normal because we know that that grabs a hold of them and it changes their life and it changes their mental health. And like you said, it's depression, it's grief, it's trauma. It can be anything. And eventually, in an eventuality, we all know that you're going to lose those parents. You're going to lose those aunts and uncles. Mm-hmm. And I know in my family, and particularly, like we don't have, like our, I think our oldest person is in their 50s. And that's just crazy to think about because I'm only nine years away from that. And I don't consider myself an old man. Now, you, on the other hand. <laughs> <laughs> Still a young stallion. Yeah. 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 But, you know, and like these two, these young two, are, these are guys are young guys compared to us because, I mean, that's, there's a big difference. Yeah. But, you know, when I think about, <laughs> that, yeah, they still can't take it. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I tell my boy all the time. I was like, I don't care how big you get. You ain't never going to be able to do anything. So, but, in, you know, but seriously, like the, the thoughts that, you know, there's, you know, these kids, they're growing up like that. And it's just like, you want to, you want to get a hold of them, but they're not in an environment to where they're going to be able to understand it until, yeah. until, you know, maybe they have to go through something in order for it to happen. And some people do have to reach that rock bottom in order for something to happen. And that's a stigma in itself. Oh, yeah. So I think it's, you know, that's a a lot that we have to deal with as Native families. And um, it's, you know, in my family, like I said, our our, our oldest ones are like in their 50s. And it's crazy to think that. And like in an eventuality, I'm going to be one of the oldest ones. And it's already a responsibility. And how much greater of a responsibility is it going to be whenever I am? And everyone's going to be looking towards me in order to get all that knowledge. And that's go straight back to our meditation because everything is supposed to flow back through mm-hmm. because we're the ones that are providing all the knowledge and all of that spirit, all of that knowledge, all the education is flowing back into the our next generation. Yeah. And that's how we're breaking the curses. That's how we're breaking the trauma. That's how we're doing this. And so we're breaking the stigma at the same time by doing what we're doing. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. And like I do see a lot of uh I would say high school events is when we see the the biggest impact. Uh, an example is the career fair. Is um, we gave out like three hundred Narcan because these kids already knew the risks associated with uh, substance use, and most of them would say that they were getting it for their parents. Is because yeah. uh, like we knew these households too. Like I mean, Barry, you're halfway related to all of them anyway, <laughs> yeah. and so like you're uh, the half Domingos. Really yeah, the, yeah. 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 
And then I'm like, that's my grandma. She's a junior. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But, like, we see kids taking care of their parents now, which is bizarre. Like, and which is weird is because I I feel like I kind of did that, too, whenever I was a kid. Um, And it was just because, like, substance use was normal. But then in the elder generation, recovery was normal. And so I would see that polarity of, uh, you know, active addiction and then those in recovery. And uh, I was like, can I just skip the step and go to the recovery portion? And so that's why, like, I've been, you know, clean and sober my entire life um, because I knew uh, all my relatives were saying they thought they could just have one drink and then it would have been fine. Uh, And it never worked out that way. Uh, And so I was like, okay, I'll listen to that. And I think we are seeing that a lot in our younger generation now. Um, And then, uh, you know, our big obstacle now is schools, um, like the actual school leadership. So, like, out of those, like, 300 Narcan we gave out at the career fair, some of the schools actually took away the supplies that was going to be used to save lives. Uh, And so now we try to get creative and doing, uh, you know, like our college safe boxes, our new thing we just launched, like, two days ago. Uh, and now people are ordering supplies to keep uh, their kids safe or them safe, and it's all, like, anonymous, so they don't even have to put a name down. Um, and so that's just one way of us kind of breaking the stigma or, you know, kind of doing a stigma loophole, if you will, yeah. to where they're still anonymous. Um, but it's working, and people are, you know, getting the stuff that they need. And so I think that's one thing that we're doing pretty good at is, uh, you know, adapting to whatever obstacles are thrown at us. Yeah, for sure. You know, and I think it's funny, too, how um, these kids already know what they're dealing with. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I know whenever I was a little little guy, I mean, I knew exactly what was going on. And I wasn't even in the room with my, you know, with my dad or, you <laughs> yeah. know, uh, mm-hmm. I, I seen him do it all, you yeah. know. and uh, And I can't unsee that. You know what I mean? Like I can't. I I it's it's just crazy the the memories that I have of I could just smell a smell, and knew what they were in there doing. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. um, you know, and I I can still remember all of that. You know, and uh, yeah, I think it's I think it's uh, cool how we, you know we are finding ways to reach who we need to reach or to help you know uh anonymous or whatever you mm-hmm. know like um that's pretty awesome man I, mm-hmm. I whose idea was that oh it was a uh, harm reduction man's idea pretty oh harm reduction yeah. man <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> just we're all harm reduction it's like yeah. spider-man <laughs> yeah he's, he's, he's flying around somewhere yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get a costume one day. It, it could be Hawk. We just don't know. Yeah. <laughs> get that regalia ready. Yeah. Well, you know, um, hopefully, you know, we 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 can just keep battling this stigma. You know, we can just keep sticking up for these people, letting them know, you know, lead by example, you know, show them that, you know, um, you know, I I hope I can be that light for somebody, you know, because, you know, like you were saying, like, I know so many people in the community or, you know, mm-hmm. um, been around the block a time or two, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Multiple blocks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> One side of the city to the other. Yeah. 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 I'll be there in two hours. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, and... You know, uh, I definitely want people to see what I'm doing now. You know, I believe in Mm -hmm. recovering out loud. You know, I want everybody to see that, you know, we do recover. We do heal. We we are trying to make a better life for people. And it ain't how is how does it make my life better by somebody else getting sober? I mean, it doesn't. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> but it, it's it's a way out for them. You know, it's it's man, I'm I'm tired of watching my people suffer. You know, um I watch my family. I watch like I said, I was watch all my aunts and uncles just 
Man. One died in a car wreck whenever I was 10. Other one drowned. Other one died from cirrhosis. You know, I mean, it, and I love these people. You know, I thought the world is these people. Mm-hmm. You know, and me and their kids all had to grow up without them. You know, and you, you see that today. You know, parents, you know, not not being able to raise their kids, you know. And uh, we got to find a way to uh, let people know that there is help. There is a way out. And, uh, you know, anything anything towards that goal will help. You know, uh, we we have a big event coming up in in February. Yeah, the uh, the city of Watonga actually uh, held a meeting and Tor felt very out of place. Uh, it was <laughs> it was with the chief of the BIA <laughs> and yeah. the chief of police of Watonga, and then us four. <laughs> and uh, it turns out they want us to do a massive uh, town wide uh, substance use awareness slash recovery event. Um, and they just asked us, you know, uh, by name, honestly, to, to host this event. So February 10th, uh, it's a Saturday. We're trying to, uh, get it pretty, uh, pretty big, pretty, uh, engaging for the youth uh, and the community and all that stuff. Um, and then another way we are promoting recovery that is brand new, uh, because Barry is going to be a head man dancer mm. January 27th. Mm-hmm. Mm. We figured, why not start a recovery gourd clan? Uh, and we're winging it, honestly. But yeah. it's gonna it's gonna turn out great. I, I mean, like that's the is. tour methodology. Mm-hmm. Is honestly, we're just gonna see if it works. Uh, and uh, that started, you know, three week three years ago of us winging it, and we're still here. Mm-hmm. Um, so we can't wait to see what that's like. Yeah, we're still trying to think of a name. We're still trying to uh, <laughs> think of color. I mean, you know, th- yeah. just a lot of brainstorming yeah. right now. Yep. But people are ready for this thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, people have already reached out and be like, I want to be a part of this, yep. you know. Yeah. So I think that's that just shows, you know, that, uh, you know, we are trying to make an impact in our communities, you know. And uh, I just want a real rugged name that when people yeah. hear, they just think. That's that's Barry Botone. Like, I, I want to be part of that. He, he really wants his name. Yeah, it's yeah. Barry yeah. Botone. Yeah. Go, this is the Barry Botone work plan. Like, <laughs> goodness. Well, um, uh, what else y'all want to talk about? We can uh, talk about stigma and pride kind of go hand in hand. So another thing that Mm -hmm. we face, for some reason, uh, we do get a lot of people um, that don't like sending our people to outside treatment centers. Kind of odd because the goal is still recovery. Uh, Mm -hmm. People just want to have the, uh, I want to say, the notoriety of it was them that got them in recovery but that's not what recovery is all about Mm -hmm. recovery is about the individual bettering their life no matter how they do it whether it's Mm -hmm. on their own through support um anything like that uh and so i do see uh for some reason a lot of like egos kind of uh Mm. getting crushed where they're like well you know can we like keep them here we're like well i mean honestly you know other states have you know, light years ahead of like uh, our programs, our sober living, all that stuff. So uh, that's why kind of why we support actually uh, people leaving the state, fresh start, more resources, more sober living opportunities, more employment opportunities. And then once they are, you know, more healed and then ready to actually come back and then endure the environment that they left, that's what we want to see them, uh, thrive honestly and so that's just one thing we see uh which is a weird stigma slash pride scenario but uh i mean it's all up to the person honestly whatever they yeah. want is what we try to do for them uh we do you know like give suggestions like hey are you sure you want to stay are you sure you want to live you know at your baby mama's house when you get out of treatment mm. and mm. then mm. they're like yeah i'll be fine and then yeah. they call yeah. us two yeah. days later be like can we can we do something else yeah uh, and we're like yeah absolutely like um that's one, you know, one thing that we deal with. But uh, one thing that we do is just never give up on the person. 
I mean, you know, our phones are always on. We're waiting for phone calls, hopefully not from jail, but we get those all the time. Mm-hmm. Phone bills racking up just from those uh. those collect calls. But, you know, that's something that, that we see. So we hope to uh, hopefully change the mindset about that, of uh, where people go to treatment. Because, like I said, if they're in recovery and it's doing great for them, why does it matter how they got there? Yeah. Because, you know, it's just, just something we deal with. Yeah, you know, uh, when... When I found out that I, you know, I could call this number and they would help me, I was like, I got to get out of Oklahoma. You know, I didn't want to be somewhere where I had the choice to walk out. You know, and if I'm in Oklahoma and I walk outside, I'm like, I can walk home from here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on a mission. I've done that. Yeah. Plenty. It's only I'm eight hours away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know, I mean, that's just my mindset. Mm-hmm. I can make it home. I could be in Tulsa, be stranded, and be like, I'll walk home. You know, I mean, that's just my mindset. So, you know, I knew that whenever I knew I wanted to go get help. So they were like, you know, do you want to go to California? And I was like, of course. You know, <laughs> um, Cause I had to get away, you know, I had to be somewhere that I could not have the choice to just walk out, you know, and, and it worked, you know, um, the, the recovery community in Orange County where I was at, man, is amazing. Amazing. I'm telling you, like the, like you were saying, light years ahead of Oklahoma, like they're trying to bring that same model to Oklahoma. You know, because you go to a meeting in California and somebody says, Oklahoma, like the whole meeting is from, uh, there's like over 100 people there. Yeah, Everybody's from Oklahoma. And all the California people are like, what are y'all doing out there? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. Like, yeah. I just I'm wanted like, to see the beach. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, you have no idea how yeah. bad... Drugs are in Oklahoma. Like, mm-hmm. they're, they're horrible. Mm-hmm. I-40. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's horrible here. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, our communities are flooded. You know, and uh, that is definitely on, you know, there, there's definitely not a shortage going on of drugs and drug addicts around this place. You know, but so that's why I think it's important that we get more people into recovery. Because that's how we, you know, uh, the opposite of addiction is connection. Well, when people come back, they want to connect back with their community. They want to connect back with their culture. You know, this uh, Gord clan that we're talking about, I mean, that's to me like the perfect ideal for a person to get back into that circle. You know, because that that circle, it it helps people heal. You know, it it brings a lot of joy into people's lives. Just being there. People that ain't even native. You know, I mean, Mm -hmm. the the things that it's doing for these people. I mean, that that, to me, that's just it it should go hand in hand. You know, we should be celebrating every person that goes and gets sober. Yep. I hope uh, I hope this year. we can actually like you know throw on benefit dances or recovery dances like pretty much any time somebody comes back or even oh you know, yeah just graduations anything like that for people uh, graduating treatment all that just to celebrate because we like I mean it's kind of underwhelming them like you know overcoming like all their life challenges and then coming back on the flight and just going back home like no, yeah it needs to be yeah it needs to be it, celebrated it needs to be celebrated uh-huh. um because it's it's a birthday honestly yeah it's it's a sobriety date it's a new life yep and so hopefully we get to see a lot of that yeah this year. you know uh there's a tribe in california i have no idea there's so many tribes in california but <laughs> this one tribe when these people come back from from rehab it's like they have this like um, this honor like thing that they do where they celebrate the person, you know the the leader of their tribe, uh, traditional leaders. They all come together for this person, and they let you know it's like they welcome them back home. You know, 
that to do something like that, I mean, to let people know that we got your back or, you know, mm -hmm. we, we'll walk with you, you know, uh, that would be amazing. You know, uh, hopefully, I mean, I'm not saying that's going to happen or, you know, or, but <laughs> yeah. just the thought that this is how people, other tribes are celebrating their people that are, that are recovering. I mean, that, that's amazing to mm -hmm. me, you know, uh, not to say that it, it can't happen here, yeah. but you know, just I'm I'm gonna put that out into yeah. the universe to see if it ever. We'll happens. start out with the Bluetooth speaker and just those four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure thing. Yeah. Yeah. Sure thing. Yeah. I'm gonna give. Sure thing. Yeah. Tour song for yeah. some reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. you know. Um, you know, we got a lot of good things that are fixing it. You know, uh, we ain't got nothing in the bank, but, yep. you know, we're still here. You know, we're still able to do what we're doing, you know, in a very, you might as well say, with no budget at all. <laughs> yeah. you, know? Yeah. you know, creators have been, been good to yeah, us. You know? us. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, it's just... It's just part of it. You know, we, we've been dealing with it. Uh, we're still having making a huge impact, I feel like, on our community. People are, you know, people that I haven't heard from in years are reaching out to me. You know, and uh, I, I love that. You know, I love that people can call on us. You know, um, they have an event. You know, they, yeah. they have just people know that we like to get out there. Yeah. Cook some hot dogs. <laughs> yeah. Some hot, yeah. I'm burned down on hot dogs. Yeah. Dog. Got signature food too, signature song. Yeah. 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 yeah but yeah, like uh everybody everybody invites us everywhere. We're like, yeah, we got gas money, we'll go out there. Like we I mean we have judges that are like saying we're doing amazing things. Yeah. We have people I think in Shawnee were crying because they saw like the amount of supplies we were giving people because they were just like, This is like unheard of. And we're all doing this through like community partnerships, like mm -hmm. where we sell our uh, pretty much our distribution services, honestly, uh, to make, you know, those, you know, nonprofits look great or anything. So that way we're both, you know, helping them out, but we're also helping our people out. We're helping our, you know, government out by not spending a dime because <laughs> yeah. we're just getting all this free stuff and then trying to just give it out as much as we can. I mean, like, if we had a list of everything that we give out, like, be pages long, and then we would have, like, the list of what we pay for, and it's, like, salaries, Nothing. bracelets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's, like, yeah. that's it. Broke us. Yeah, <laughs> but here we, yep, new bracelets, but here we are giving out, you know, millions of dollars worth of stuff. I mean, like, Narcan alone is, what, you know, $40 a box. Yeah. We give mm -hmm. out a little bit over 5000 just in the last, like, six months. Mm-hmm. And so that's some math I can't even do, but it's a lot. And then, uh, you know, a bunch. yeah, Plan Bs. Plan Bs are more than mm. Narcan. Get yeah. out yeah. thousands of those. Uh, and then, you know, you got HIV test kits, sterile syringe programs, sterile pipes, medical lock bags, you know, deterra bags to get rid of medication, just everything that we give out. Car seats, for some reason, we have yeah. three plan car C's. seats. Yeah, plan C's, C's. If, <laughs> if plan A and B don't work. <laughs> yeah, we just uh, close. Like, I mean, this is all just stuff that we're just trying to, like, scrounge for just because we know, like, people need, you know, hygiene kits when they go to treatment. Mm -hmm. Or if they are, you know, unhoused and they don't want to go into a homeless shelter or into treatment, we're like, all right, well, we can give you, you know, a jacket, some blankets, socks, you know, menstrual products, like anything that we can do to help them out, like, as much as they want to be helped because we can't force people into treatment. Like I said, like, we we almost tried one guy, uh, we won't say his name, but, uh, you know, we were waiting, had got him a hotel room because uh, he was – he was homeless and then uh the guy ran but like we busted into his hotel room we were gonna drag him yeah. and then <laughs> but he wasn't there and so we we're like all right well he has our number so you know whenever yeah. he's ready i mean we're here yeah. like we won't we ain't mad at you yeah call us yeah we still no got your room key. yeah <laughs> no love lost bro yeah i mean we but, out here but. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, like that's just the stuff that we we do for people is you know 
I mean, I was what using rewards points to get people hotel rooms. Mm. I was just like, all right, well, this is what I could afford. Here we go. Uh, just because, like, like I said, we got no budget, so we rely on <laughs> other yeah. stuff. Creating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go to the front desk. You'll trade yeah. your plan Bs for a hotel room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like we just we just kind of make it happen. Honestly, I mean, we we'll get free drinks. And there we go. Just mm. all this Shout stuff. Out to Chris. Yeah. Yep. Shout out to Chris. Shout out to and Chase. Mm. Thank yeah. you very much. Chase. Yeah, see, just community yeah. effort. Creative is good to us. Yeah, yep. yep. must be doing something right. Slowly yeah. breaking the stigma, Tori is. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we got a lot of great things going on. You know, um, a lot of big events. The Watonga event. Uh, we do. Uh, <coughs> we're starting to do a, a meeting in Watonga area. These informal gatherings on Tuesday nights at six. Uh, think I can't remember. I think the address was. It's North South Street. I remember. Yes, that. North South Street but, in Watonga. Yeah, on Tuesday nights yeah. at Flyer. six. The flyers on the Facebook page. Yes, so if you follow us on page. Facebook. Yep, that's and where you'll you don't find everything. Follow us. And yeah. then on Thursdays tonight. We do a well Brighty meeting at 1950 South Shepherd from 6.30 to 8 tonight on Thursdays. In El Reno. In El Reno at the 1950 uh, address. And, uh, you know, that's a well Brighty meeting. Um, something I'm a little familiar with, but it, I mean, like, it's still kind of new to me, you know. Um, but, I mean, it. I'm for any kind of recovery. You know, if it helps a person out, you know, especially my native community, you know, I, I want it, I want them to have that option, you know, and uh, you might as well say it's, it's, you know, uh, I haven't, it hasn't made me feel any type of way towards, you know, what helped me stay sober this long is working another 12 step program. You know, uh, they say they go hand in hand, you know. Uh, but it's it's just a Native American approach to twelve steps, and uh, you don't it it is it isn't like the other program where you need a sponsor and they help you go through the book, and it's more of like a um, a curriculum, and it's like a you do it kind of like a class, like everybody does it as a group. So uh, hopefully, you know, um, we can get you know. It becomes bigger. I think. I think this whole everything's gonna keep growing. Mm-hmm. You know, um, like I said, nobody's just came up and be like, "Y'all suck." You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know not people. Yet. Not yeah, to our yeah. yeah, yeah, not to our face. No. They tell other people that we suck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, but you know, um, we hear a lot of good things. You know, mm-hmm. people love what we're doing. You know, and I I think the best part about it is we all enjoy what we do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Mm. I couldn't imagine doing this with another group of people. You know, uh, I feel like we all do what we're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so, yeah, what else? What else you guys want to talk about? No one slanders our name. (laughs) Don't slander our name. (laughs) 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 <laughs> yeah, I mean, we do have. I I do know we are always the loudest booth anywhere we For go. Sure. Like, and then mm. people do. Uh, <laughs> there's a couple of reactions anytime they see us. They're like, oh my god, these dudes, these dudes are here. What are they giving out now? And then, <laughs> like, because we always have something new. And then you know, and then other people just like they'll drive from Clinton just to hang out in our office because we're just <laughs> we're just like having fun like and then you know we'll have clients just chilling in our office they're like you guys handle your job super well and we're like oh it's just all the jokes like we have to <laughs> we yeah. have to make them because we like it just keeps us sane and like yeah. like I said it doesn't even feel like work like I mean there are you know days where we're working you know like 7 30 to 8 at night and then so it's like almost what 12 hour 13 hour days yeah, however right. long that is yeah. but like we're having fun the whole time uh, if people show up, I mean, if not, I mean, we just what would we do? Yes, slingshot marshmallows in the air with the, <laughs> yeah. with a tourniquet yeah. from yeah. <laughs> from our kits, and so like we we try to have a have a good time. We try to you know have that be contagious, um, 
to people that attend our events. And then uh, I do think that's why we do get a lot of people that uh, ask us to come out. And then we end up kind of taking over the event inadvertently. Like, it's just because, like, can you do this? Can you do this? This and this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, we'll like, uh, we've had a couple events where, like, it started out with just, can you guys set up your TP? We're like, that's the hardest thing for us to do. We've set this thing up, <laughs> yeah, yeah. like, 12 times, and it's been, pre- like, correctly set up twice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then, like, and then it turns from that to, like, hey, can you have Domingo start dancing? And then... Uh, <laughs> And then it's like, can you have an MC? And then how about food? And we're like, all right, but we got no money. We'll just ask people. We'll like yeah, hit yeah, up legislators, yeah. hit up other programs. Um, but because they kind of like back our our mission up, it's kind of easy to get yeah. this stuff. And so uh, I think that's how we're we're successful. Is just like we're just always always asking for stuff. Like one day, one day we'll give back to you know the people that have helped us. <laughs> yeah. <out>. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> maybe a little shirt. <laughs> hot dogs. We'll make some hot yeah, dogs. Hot dogs. Yeah, hot dogs. Yeah, that's our little thing. Our little thirty dollar grill. It's got dents in it. <laughs> just yeah. bring it around everywhere. Just cook hot dogs. Yeah. yeah. Well, what, what cracks me up is at our office. You know, we're shacked up with all the other programs. Shacked up. <laughs> <laughs> but they, uh, one of them, commented at us and said, "Man, for a, a no budget." Program, y'all have a lot of free stuff. You know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> loads of yeah. loads of it. Like yeah. our storage area is always full of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, like our office is full of stuff. Mm-hmm. The area yeah. out front of our office is full of stuff. Yeah, you can take a nap on coats if you wanted to. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. curl Go up missing. under yeah. under a buffalo robe, you can do it all. We uh, have a couch out there. People curl up on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We I don't know how we get all this stuff. Honestly, I just like ask people, and they're like, "Yeah, how many do you want?" I was like, "My hundred thousand." They're like, you want two thousand? Sure. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. yeah, every day they're like, you got more packages up front. I'm like, oh, sorry. And then just taking over places with what we can get rid of. That's why we need, we just need a trailer, honestly, for yeah. everything we yeah. bring out. One day, uh, a kitchen in it. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> just a grill on the side. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like something uh, brother Eddie could probably. Make. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, is there a flyer out for the Watonga event, event yet? There will be. We're trying to nail down the location. They wanted to actually do a whole block party, uh, but they chose February 10th, which is freezing. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, it's going to be snow. So hopefully it'll be at the Watonga Armory, which is pretty big. Uh, I know they'll bring a bounce house huge, out. Huge. They're trying to get a They're trying to get a band. We're trying to mm-hmm. do <laughs> We're trying to do a competition called Smoke Meats Not Meth. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm. So... <laughs> <laughs> we'll hopefully get that going. Uh, you know, we'll see how that turns out. Then we can start baked goods, not yourself. Yeah. Uh, you can do <laughs> just we can we can come up with all these names. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so far, I think we have about thirty programs coming out, uh, and that we haven't even announced it to like tribal programs. Honestly, we've just announced it to uh, recovery organizations, sober living homes, uh, treatment facilities, all that stuff, and so. Uh, we hope uh, we'll make an impact. We're going to try to, you know, give out thousands of Narcan, thousands of fentanyl test kits, you know, do some activities, maybe painting, I don't know, whatever we can Dancing. scrounge up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We'll do the Cupid Shuffle. Just yeah. do that for oh, yeah. six hours. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we'll come out with a flyer. Hopefully we'll come out with, uh, you know, a self-help workbook. Like, we got we got big plans. It's just, uh, you know, time. Mm-hmm. They yeah, were time afraid and it was going to be bigger than the cheese Money. festival. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Hopefully, uh, it's going to be bigger than cheese festival, <laughs> <laughs> fentanyl fest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, I think I think they uh, underestimated how how many programs we could yeah, get there. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and so now, if we mention free food, which we were hopefully get is free food, then you know all of Watonga, all of Gary will be out there. You know, Sealing, all these other places, Kingfisher. Mm-hmm. We hope to see them out there uh, so that way they can, you know, stop by, have fun, free food, free smoked meats, no free meth. <laughs> no uh, meth. Yeah. And so uh, we'll, we'll, you know, keep everybody updated on our social media about uh, the progress of that. And then, uh, you know, figure out what the next event is because, you know, uh, that just kind of fell in our laps. All of our events, honestly, just fall in our laps. Yeah, like, people are sure. like, it's not even spring yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've had requests be like, you want to sponsor a hand game? And we're like, we don't even know how to play. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. like, yeah. Uh, we like rock paper scissors. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> but we're so we'll we you know 
we'll see what else we can do. Yeah, I we'll mean, get involved. Yeah, absolutely. We'll get involved. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're always down, and so I think that's that's what we like doing. We're like, yeah, sure, anything. Get out of the office, like. The office is where we work the least. We're, <laughs> we're yeah, honestly right? just just That's sitting just there. Our yeah. Area. yeah, yeah. I'm over here making harm reduction, man. You know, superhero <laughs> edits and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, our real office is actually our our car. Our, yeah. We're, we're driving. in the tour ho. Yeah, the tour ho. Yeah, tor-ho. talking about windmills and wind yeah, jo- wind yeah. <laughs> all of our ridiculous debates. What's a male witch? Is it a warlock? Is it a wizard? <laughs> is it a is it a druid? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, is it a craft fair inside yeah. or is it a craft <laughs> outside? Outside? Yeah. outside? We don't know which one is which. Yeah, no, we found out craft fair has to be outside, right? No, no, no. Market, Here we go again. Farmers markets are outside. Farmers market yeah. are outside. But then when they moved the craft market into the inside, then it became a craft fair. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. The only hand game Barry knows is throwing up the sign. <laughs> <laughs> what a... He's like, he's like nine, eight. eight. Yeah. 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 I was like looking to... <laughs> Counting real fast. <laughs> yeah. Goodness. Yes, well... No, we, uh, January 27th, Headman Gordon. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be Headman. Con Show Community Hall. Yep. Uh, pretty exciting. You know, uh, I feel very honored. You know, um, I've never, I think one time I was asked to be an AD like some years ago. But I didn't even know what I was doing then, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Just pointing. <Yeah. laughs> Point with your lips. <laughs> <laughs> Mop every once in a while, yeah. take some coffee yeah. around, you know. Um, pick up my cots, pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, yeah, I was <laughs> I didn't know what was going on, you know, probably didn't even really bother that much. But uh, you know, this time around, you know, feel very honored, you know. Um it's just one of the things you get to experience when you sober up, you know. Um the person that asked me, uh, she was like your dad would be very proud of you, you know, and that, that, that right there just by itself, you know, um, that, that by itself, you know, just really did kind of make me realize that, you know, I am on the right path, you know, and that, uh, I'm very blessed where my life is today, you know, and, um, I can't trade that for anything, you know, so, uh, aho. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not as important, but we're proud of you too, Barry. <laughs> and we'll, we'll definitely yeah. be there to back yeah. you up. Yeah, we'll we'll yeah. It was weird that you asked us to wear mesh shirts, though. But you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> khakis. Yeah, <laughs> you just be sweating in them. Yeah. We'll figure it out. Yeah. We'll figure it out oh, for sure. Goodness. Tor always does. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, mm. if y'all ain't got anything mm-hmm. else y'all want to discuss, mm-hmm. no. congratulations guess... on the new baby. Oh yeah. Oh, uh-huh. oh yeah. I waved yeah. too early. I waved Suda. too early. Yeah. Yeah. Suda. Suda. Say her name. Suda means uh, sky and creek. The middle name is uh, Hotuk Tanats. It's a uh, shooting star. Mm. Yep. Last name is Reader. Uh, white man. Oh, and, yeah. and Reader White Man. That's beautiful. It's not white man reader. What? No, no reader. You don't know your man. kid's last name. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, no. I'm just. <laughs> You're gonna get in trouble. Oh, they're gonna have to edit this out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but, uh, she's uh, she's a big big present for me this Christmas and yes, the year. So definitely. Yeah. Ooh. Well, welcome, Suda. Yep. Well, I guess with that, we're going to wrap this thing up. Uh, hopefully, we'll be back if, yeah, if yeah, we're allowed. Back. I hope so. If we're allowed. Yeah. Aho. <laughs> 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 Just pushing random buttons. <laughs>